Welcome to my little book corner or my book nook, if you will. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Melody and today we're going to be doing my June wrap up. So every month I read about six books and I, you know, write them all down in my bullet journal. Here it is all filled out and very satisfying to look at. By the way, I do make a bunch of bullet journaling videos, work really hard on them and I love them a lot. So go check them out. But I do read about six books a month. That's just what works for me. It's definitely not as much as some other people read every month, but I guess you could say I'm relatable. I'm more like your average Joe in that way. A couple of years ago, six books a month was unheard of for me. So yeah, six books, that's all I've got. Take it as it is. But these six books are all really good and I want to share them today. So let's get talking about them. The first book I read in June was The Star-Crossed Sisters of Tuscany by Lori Nelson Spielman. I talked about this in my mid-year book freakout tag because I had just finished it when I filmed that video. It was very fresh in my mind and I gave this book five stars. I am slightly obsessed with this book. I loved it because of the setting. I loved it because of the characters. So this book is about Amelia Fontana and her family who live in Brooklyn. They're an Italian American family. They have roots in Italy. And basically there's this curse on their family that the second born daughter will not find love. So that's kind of the basics of the book. Like the, the biggest plot point I would say is that there's this curse on the family. So Amelia is a second daughter and so is her cousin Lucy. And they both embark on a trip with their long kind of lost Aunt Poppy, Great Aunt Poppy. Great Aunt Poppy was also a second daughter and she was kind of cast out of the family a while ago and nobody really knows the truth as to why, but Amelia's grandma hates her sister basically. So Poppy was cast out and she's marked as like kind of the black sheep of the family. But Aunt Poppy takes Amelia and Lucy on a trip to Italy. They go to Venice, Florence, and then the Amalfi Coast. They stop in the town of Amalfi, I believe. So they go on this journey and Poppy promises these girls that she will break the curse. Along the way, we learn Poppy's backstory, why she was cast out of the family, that sort of thing. And we also get a couple different love stories sprinkled in, or are they disaster stories because of the curse? Who knows? But this is really a book about self-discovery, about family bonds, and about adventure in Italy. And I cannot say enough about it. This was so fun. This was just a fun book to read. I got really attached to the characters. It was laugh out loud funny at times. And at the end of the day, it just kind of made me reflect on my life and my family and that sort of thing. It was just a very beautiful book about self-discovery and about love and about taking chances. So that is the Star-Crossed Sisters of Tuscany. Hello, Fera. Hello. Figaro is more chill and he's right over there being just the fattest cat in the world, if you want to see. He's currently naked. He doesn't have a collar on. Me, right, boobs. Anyway, next I read Lore by Alexandra Bracken. This book was a three-star book. I listened to the audio version of this story and that may have lowered my rating just a bit. There's a ton of characters in this book. There's a ton of family names and mm, kind of groups that you have to keep track of in your head and through the audiobook it's just kind of hard to do that. There are cheat sheets and maps in this book. What are they called? Not cheat sheets, but like pages that help you keep everything in line, you know, in the book. So if you're listening to it audibly and you don't have those pages to help you out, it can get confusing. Tons of Greek names, that kind of thing. So it was three stars. It wasn't my favorite story, but it was a good entertaining read or listen for you know, a couple afternoons. So this book is about Lore. That's our main character's name. 
and she is a descendant of the line of Perseus, I want to say. So this is kind of a Greek mythology tale set in modern times. The gods of Olympus are still alive and well and still kind of ruling the earth, but every seven years they go through the Agon, which is a time where the gods are mortal for one week at a time and anybody can kill the god and steal their godly powers for the next seven years until the next are gone and then they might get killed again. Sorry if you hear jingling, that is Farah. Every time I sit down to film, she brings her little toy up on the bed or near the tripod and just plays. It's this little thing right here. Every single time. So sorry about that, but you know, cat mom life. <laughs> So anyway, this book is set during one of the Agons and Lore, Vera, and Lore gets kind of tangled back up. Vera, stop it! And Lore gets tangled back up into this world of violence and Greek gods and battles despite trying her best to get out of that world. Lore ends up striking a deal with one of the gods and she finds some long lost friends along the way that she ends up helping and they go on this journey to try to end the Agon. So, it is very action-packed. There's lots of fighting, limb slicing, that kind of thing. So it is fun, but it just wasn't my favorite. It's set in New York City, and for some reason books set in New York City are just n never my favorite. I don't know. <laughs> Whenever authors write about New York City, more than any other setting, I feel like they're very specific. They'll be like, we went down this street, we were at the corner of this street and this street, and at this building, expecting a lot of readers to know where those places are, but I've never been to New York. I don't know anything about New York City. Sometimes authors do that, and I'm just like, stop being so specific with the setting. I don't know what that is. I don't get a picture in my head, and it's just rambling at that point, if, if you know what I mean. That's just a tiny thing I nitpick about, but. It is what it is. And another thing, I guess, is that you it does take a while to get the backstory of some of the characters. So mm, it takes a long time for you to realize why you should care about some of them. And by then it's like too late, you know, I don't think I care, you know? So that that is what I experienced when reading lore. I just wasn't as attached to the characters as I should have been. So that also lends to why I gave it three stars. Moving on to this beauty of a book. I really really liked this book. It was This is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace and it was beautiful. I loved this book. It was so much fun. I listened to the audiobook which was very well done and I had to buy the physical copies because it's a duology so I bought both of them. I just loved it so much that I had to get it. <laughs> I gave this book four stars, 4.5, probably around there. Let me just show you, we get a map in here. So this book is set in kind of an island kingdom. We have six different islands that each one has a magical affinity for that island. We also have those written down in the book as well. We have soul magic, elemental magic, enchantment magic, mind magic, time, restoration and curse magic. So lots of magic, love to see it. So the basic premise of this book is that we are following Amora and she is the heir to the kingdom. She's supposed to perform kind of a ritual, a, a kind of a test to prove to her people that she is ready to rule the kingdom. Well, the test goes very, very wrong. She gets kind of banished and she has to run away to try to prove herself worthy to rule her kingdom. It is very, very interesting. Her and her family are the only family allowed to practice their certain kind of magic, which is soul magic. So it's kind of dark and very kind of twisty, which I love. So when Amora ends up fleeing her family and her island, she ends up teaming up with a pirate and they set off on his ship with a stowaway person as well. I'm not gonna spoil it, but there is also a stowaway on their ship. And they end up traveling to the different islands, meeting different people, trying to prove Amora's 
innocence and her um, abilities or her worth, I guess. And they're also trying to discover what kind of evil things are going on in the kingdom and why Amora was never told about certain things. So they go on a journey, you know, of discovery, trying to find the truth. And along the way, there are sea monsters, there are mermaids, and let me tell you, just a lot of magic, a lot of fun. I love this book. It was very much like Pirates of the Caribbean. It was just everything I wanted. I love reading books about the ocean and about the sea in the summertime. It is just so much fun. Last year, I read Fable, the duology of Fable around the summertime. Loved it. And so now this year, I found another duology set on the ocean with pirates and sailing and it's just great. It's good fun. I highly recommend. So three books left and book number four, I read Beach Read. I don't need that anymore. <laughs> so this book was a surprise. I don't read adult contemporary romance. I just don't. I've never really gotten into it. Colleen Hoover who, like, I don't care. <laughs> That's gonna make a lot of people mad. Uh, sorry if you like Colleen Hoover. I just don't think I'll ever read her. But anyway, I ended up reading Beach Read and I was just kind of in the mood. I don't know. Despite myself, I felt like reading an adult romance novel. And I didn't hate it. I really didn't. I didn't think I would, but I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. I think initially I wanted to give this book four stars, but after sitting on that for a while, I think it definitely is more like 3.5. Like I said, I'm just not into this genre as much as fantasy, so I, I did like it, but it's just not gonna stick with me. However, if you follow me on Goodreads, which is linked down below, you can follow me there, I had a, <laughs> I had a fun time writing the review for this book on Goodreads. I said on there that this book betrayed me in three ways, and that is so true. First of all, this book is not set on the ocean. You can't look at this book and tell me you didn't think about a beach on the ocean with sunburns and sand and towels and umbrellas and sunscreen and waves. Like, that's the vibe I get looking at this and reading the title. In reality, we get like this much of the beach <laughs> in this book. I was shocked. This is actually set on a lake and I'm, I was just shocked. I was like, I thought we were getting a beach read, but we get a lake house read. So anyway, that was a shock to me. <laughs> and then the second thing that was just like a betrayal in my opinion was this book was very popular a couple years ago. That is no secret. I feel like everybody read this book a couple years ago and I'm very late to the game. Point is, a lot of people have talked about this book. A lot of people have raved about it. The most interesting plot point of this book, nobody said a word about it. What they forgot to mention was that our main character, January, her father recently died, like right before the start of this book. And when he died, she found out that he had been a cheater. He had been cheating on her mother for a while and she didn't know about that until he died. That is so juicy. That? The betrayal? Nobody thought to mention that? That's what I stayed for. I stayed for the betrayal, the hurt, the regret, you know, I. that's what kept me hooked on this book. That's what sucked me into it was that plot point like January was reeling from that it was mm, it was so fun to read about tragic but like very very fun to read about and so there's that whole aspect of January dealing with the grief and with feeling like she never actually knew her own father like that th kind of thing everybody forgot to talk about because everybody wants to talk about the romance and yes the romance is good but the betrayal is better <laughs> That makes me sound so messed up in the head, but I like fantasy. What do you expect? What do you expect me to like from a contemporary romance? Of course, I'd pick the betrayal as my favorite part. And the fact that the beach house that she's living in for the summer was her father's and his mistress's beach house. Pew. Like nobody talked about that, how she's living in this house that she's like disgusted to be in. That's the best part of the book. 
And I'm here to talk about that. And I'm not going to talk about the romance plot because everybody else has talked about it. I don't need to. And a million people have read this book, so <laughs> I'm going to shut up about it now. I like that book a lot. 3.5 stars. All right, and now the next two books, the final two books I read in June are part of a series, so I'll just kind of talk about them in conjunction, I guess. So we have Every Heart a Doorway and Down Among the Sticks and Bones. These are by Sean and McGuire, and they're cute little things. I love them. I love short books, especially books like this. I think sometimes a book can be too short and I get upset about that. That's how I felt about um, the Starcross Sisters of Tuscany. I really wish this was longer because so much happened in so few pages. But when it comes to these two books, they're so short, but they don't feel short. You feel like you get the full story. Nothing's left out. Everything's covered. Everything is wrapped up nicely and it's only like 100 pages. Yeah, like 150 to 200 pages. Wow. If you can write a fantasy novel in that few of pages, that is just impressive. But it is also a series, so the story is continuing throughout the next books, and I think there's quite a few of these books. Like maybe eight are out, and there's I think she's still writing more. But I absolutely loved these two first books. I gave them both four stars. I did listen to them audibly. They're only about five hours a book, I want to say, maybe less. So these two books are, I would say, young adult fiction, leaning towards adult fiction because there are some more adult topics or jokes talked about in this book that I wouldn't want. I wouldn't expect, I guess, somebody younger than 18 should be reading, but I, I don't know, it's somewhere in young adult to adult fiction. So basically if I try to sum this world up in the most simple way possible, it's very Alice in Wonderland-esque. Some children will happen upon these doors that pop up in their lives and they'll go through and experience a completely different reality, a completely different world full of fantasy, either high logic or high nonsense. There's a whole scale and a whole spectrum that they talk about in the book, trying to kind of categorize each world that people visit on this scale of high nonsense, high logic kind of a thing. It is very, very interesting to try to make sense of all these worlds to different people. It is just so fascinating. So these kids stumble into these different worlds and they're very unique for each kid. But then something happens and they get kicked out of their world and sent back to their normal reality. Back to the normal life that you and I are living in. And it's a big transition for them. So Eleanor West boarding school is built for these kids who deeply miss the world where they came from and are not adjusting very well to the normal world. The first book we follow Nancy and she just came back from an underworld type of realm super cool and she's just so different she's just really struggling to adjust so she goes to this home for wayward children and she meets a ton of other kids who are in wildly different worlds than her own and they're all desperately trying to find their door again so that they can go back to the worlds that they had visited that is the basic premise of these books or i guess kind of the setting that we get this book we follow Nancy, like I said, and then this book is actually kind of a prequel story. It is the backstory of two of the girls who we meet at the Wayward Home in this book. We meet Jack and Jill in the first book, and in the second book, we get their backstory, which is so fascinating. Wow, it is so magical, so whimsical. I love it. It just reminds me so much of Alice in Wonderland. My imagination runs wild when I am reading or listening to these. I have the third book in the series and I plan on reading that super soon, but for now, that is all. Every video I drop books. These are the six books I read in June. I highly recommend most of these books, so if you're looking for something new to read, take your pick, but also if you've read any of these, comment down below if you love them. I would love to talk about it. That is why I'm here. That is why I make videos because I love talking about books. Even though if I don't read as many books as some people, doesn't matter. We all love books here and that's why I'm here. I'm here to talk about books and share my love for books. So yeah, 
that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here. Subscribe if you feel so inclined and you'll see me in my upcoming videos. I make wrap up videos every month as well as bullet journal videos every month which are some of my favorites. I love bullet journaling and I love getting creative. Check out my bullet journaling video for July. I did a Sailor Moon themed bullet journal which I am so proud of. I think it turned out so cute. So that's a must watch if you like Sailor Moon. But other than that, I make bookish content videos here and there. I also throw in a little bit of artsy videos as well. Also, if you're a slow reader, if you love to read but you're slow and you often get overwhelmed <laughs> with the amount of books other people read or the pace that other people can read books, then I'm your girl. Come hang out with me. I'm a slow reader. I can get overwhelmed seeing how many books other people can read, where they find the time, how they read at that speed. I get overwhelmed sometimes. So if you're like that, then welcome to my channel. I am here for those types of people. I will be your advocate. <laughs> I'm gonna wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching if you're still here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.